Of course you need a new musky rod. Let's talk about which ones you should get. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian. You're watching Angling Anarchy and on today's video we're going to take a deep dive into musky fishing rods. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Chaos Tackle Assault Stick rods, specifically what we've got new for 2021. And then after that just a general discussion about any rod that you might want to buy, uh, the proper way to pick the rod, how to choose it, and some of the nomenclature that is used when describing a rod such as power and action. So let's dive in. Before we get started, I want to say a quick word about this season's musky shows. We would love to be out at all the expos this year. Obviously most of them aren't happening because of COVID. Uh, we were really excited about getting some of these new assault stick rods from Chaos Tackle out and showing them to you guys in person. Uh, unfortunately, not possible this year. The only show that is happening is the Wausau Muskie Bash, March 19th and 20th. And uh, unfortunately, Chaos Tackle is not going to be there. It's just, it's, it's too much work <laughs> for us to set up a booth for a day and a half with the amount of stuff that we have. Unfortunately, guys, we'd love to come see you, uh, but we're just gonna have to wait till next year. But please uh, take a look into going up to Wausau. Uh, Rich Reiner and Penny Reiner are gonna put on an excellent show up there. Uh, they're gonna take all the precautions needed uh, for the times that we are in right now with the virus and all that jazz. So um, I'll put a link down below in the description. You can click on that and see all the speakers that they're gonna have and who all is going to be there. I think this is gonna be a great place for small bait makers to show everybody what they have and it's gonna be a fun time. So check it out, please. All right, on to what's new from Chaos Tackle with the Assault Sticks this year. Probably the coolest thing is this guy right here. This is the Revolution Reel Seat from Outdoor Grips. Uh, Pack Bay is making these. This is a cool little addition to the Assault Stick lineup. We will have this available in the 9 foot, 9 foot 6 telescoping swat and shock and awe in the original assault stick that's about a 195 price point and then we do have a 10 foot rod which is a really cool rod in the 2020 assault sticks and that is also going to have the revolution seat on here this thing is a cool addition to this because it gives you so many more options other than just grabbing the reel here or grabbing it up front where your arm is at an angle now i mean if you want to grab it like this or kind of do a hybrid hold where part of it is up against your hand and you're still grabbing onto the reel. It just gives you a couple more options, ways to take pressure off your hand during the day and you know those 12, 14 hour days, you know how your hand will get just holding the reel one way. So it gives you a couple different configurations as long as you get used to them uh, that will take pressure off your hand at different points throughout the day. Uh, so that is a, it's a cool option. And you can actually, bring it back up here, you can unscrew this and there is a little tab that goes on there so it just acts as a uh, just a regular trigger handle if you don't want that on there for whatever reason. So nice and easy switch out. So this is a cool little deal on the a couple of the assault sticks. Uh, again, I'll have, you know, it's www.chaostackle.com. Go on there, you can find all these rods on there. All right, let's start at the end of the rod and we'll work our way up towards the tip talk about what's going on at different parts along the way and what to look for. First off, we got the handle. And you would think there's really nothing that exciting about the handle, but you do have to give it some consideration because if it's too short when you're casting, you don't get enough leverage when you're casting the bait out. If, it's, if your hands are too close together, you have a lot less power than if they're further apart. Now you don't want it to get too ridiculous, but again, then it gets unwieldy in the boat. Uh, the Chaos Assault Sticks are on the longer end of things. They're 18 and 19 inch handles on most of our rods where uh, some of the other ones are, you know, 15, 16, and, and anywhere in between. You know, there's so many different rod manufacturers out there. It's hard to say who's got what and everything uh, unless you actually go and look at spe specifications. But that's the first thing to look at is what's going to be comfortable for you, but still give you that power and leverage you need to cast big baits. Onto the reel seat. And other than this, this new revolution, 
real seat there's really not a whole lot uh, other than you know Fuji real seats seem to be the industry standard Pac Bay makes them as well but I mean really these days any real seat's going to do your there's basically just a little foot on the back of the reel slides in one side and then you just screw this down clinch it in uh, I would recommend maybe getting a little pliers and put something over this to protect it and give it maybe a quarter turn so that it just really seats the reel nice on the rod and you're not having it wobble around when you're out fishing. Let's touch real quick on what the blank is made of. Most of them are going to be graphite blanks and you'll see different numbers. Uh, some have SC234, some have IM878. Uh, Basically, the higher the number, the higher modulus of the rod is going to be, and that's what you have to worry about. The numbers really don't mean a whole lot other than the modulus of the graphite is going up as the number goes up. What is that getting you? The higher modulus rods are lighter, and when they bend, they tend to come back to straight a little bit quicker, so you get a little bit more snap out of them. So, longer casts with a higher modulus rod and a little bit lighter. In the introduction, I alluded to uh, the nomenclature that is used when describing a rod. There's two words that you're going to want to look at. That is power and one is action. Now some people get these two mixed up. So I'm going to try to explain them as best I can. So here we go. The first thing we'll touch on is the power of the rod. And the power is going to be, for musky rods anyway, medium, medium heavy, heavy, extra heavy, XX and triple X heavy on some of them. Depending on, and that is all dependent upon how much weight basically that the rod is rated to throw out as far as baits go. A double X heavy rod might be rated four to 24 ounces where a medium heavy rod might be rated three quarter to four ounce. So when you're looking for a rod, if you're looking for a rod that's going to do it all, you wanna find something kind of in the middle, maybe two to 10 ounces. Now, that might limit you because if you want to throw something really small, it might be harder to throw with that rod. If you want to throw something really big, it might be a little bit tough to throw on a rod only rated 10 ounces. But that's what the power of the rod is telling you. It's basically telling you how heavy a bait it will handle. It really doesn't matter uh, how big a fish. You can catch a giant muskie on a four foot six ultralight, and it's just gonna take you a while. So that's not what we're worried about. When you're looking at a rod, you want to buy the one that is going to have the power that encompasses the size baits that you're, you're going to use most of the time. Moving on to action. The action of the rod is something that I think is a little bit misunderstood, so I'm going to try to do my best to explain what that is. Actions are described in the following words, fast, moderate, and slow. And you also have the in-betweens of moderate fast and moderate slow. Basically, when you're going from a fast action rod to a slow action rod, all that's talking about is the amount of the tip that is flexing when you pull down on it. So a fast action rod, just the top part of the rod is going to bend before you hit the butt section and it's stiff thrust the way down. Moderate action a little bit further down and slow action halfway to all the way down to the butt, the rod is bending. So what does that do for us? It does a couple things. The faster the rod, the more sensitive it's going to be. You see a lot of walleye rods and bass rods described as extra fast even or fast. That means you've got a little bit of action on the tip, but most of the rod is going to be pretty stiff. Now, for me, I don't think that's the best action for a musky rod, and I'll explain why. I like a moderate fast action, which is what all the chaos rods are, for musky rods for two reasons. One, it allows me to cast a wider range of baits because since a little bit more of the rod is flexing, on a heavier rod, say like a shock and awe that's rated four to 24 ounces, I can actually get away with throwing some smaller baits because there is a little bit extra flex. The second one, and I think the most important part is when you're fighting a muskie and you have a large fish doing big head shakes, it's pull as the head moves this way and comes here, there's actually slack line coming back at you. So this rod being bent over is going to come back a little bit. The more bend you have, the more room that rod has to come back, but still keep pressure on that fish. So if you have a fast action rod where it's not bending all that much and you've got these big head shakes, it's probably imperceptible, but for a split second, when that fish's head comes from the side and comes towards you, 
your rod is potentially going straight and as soon as it goes straight you lose pressure on that fish. So actually having a little bit softer rod with a good butt section like the Shock and Awe has, you can let that fish shake its head and your rod is going to be pulsing like this but it's never going to go back to straight. So you're constantly keeping pressure on that fish and I think that's what helps keep fish pinned up better with these rods. I hope that explanation about power and action makes sense. If you have any questions, please guys, throw it in the comments down below. And uh, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Let's do a quick overview of different rod powers and how they relate to the baits that you're going to throw. One of the rods I use the most is a surgical strike uh, assault stick, and that is a, a medium heavy rod. So any medium heavy rod that you have is going to be good for, say, top waters, for minnow baits, for small bucktails, that sort of thing. It's nice for minnow baits, I find, because it's a little bit less powerful. So when you set the hook, you have less of a chance to pull these small hooks on one of those minnow baits out of the fish's mouth. I also really like to use a medium heavy or a heavy rod for glide baits. I find if you use too heavy and too stiff a rod for glide baits, when the fish hits, you end up pulling the bait away from the fish before they really get their teeth sunk into it and before the hooks have a chance to catch the fish's mouth and, and really get a good hook set. I think a really stiff rod for a jerk bait, which is what a lot of people use now, I don't care for that. I want something a little bit softer so when the fish hits, the rod loads a little bit and it actually slows down your reaction time and it gives bait that bait time to slide along the fish's mouth and those hooks to find a place to sink in so you can catch that fish. I know this because I was using a extra heavy seven foot six rod uh, as a jerk bait rod and at the time I was losing all sorts of fish on hellhounds and reef hogs and that sort of thing. As soon as I switched to a slightly longer rod and a slower action and less of a power of a rod, my hookups went through the roof. And I think it was because that little bit of delay when you set the hook with a softer rod, you get a better hook set with those sort of baits. So moving on up through, and I'm just using the Chaos line of rods as a reference, you know, apply this to any manufacturer that, that you like. Uh, but so we talked about the surgical strike, medium heavy. When you get into the heavy and extra heavy rods, the tactical strike and the SWAT, uh, that, those are more of the nine and 10 bucktails, some of your bigger dive and rises, some small rubber baits, maybe some of the bigger minnow baits, that sort of thing. Moving on up all the way to the Shock and Awe. The Shock and Awe is probably the other rod that's my favorite. The two rods I have in the boat almost all the time are a Surgical Strike and a Shock and Awe. And that's because they sort of, you know, your Surgical Strike is here and your Shock and Awe is here and they sort of meet in the middle and cover the whole gamut of lures that I have in my boat. There are some specialized rods that I have, the Swats and the Tactical Strikes that we'll, I'll use for some in-between baits. But for the most part, the Surgical Strike and the Shock and Awe are the two rods that I use the most. The Shock and Awe is great for throwing anything from a mid-medusa, a four ounce bait, say all the way up to the pounder size baits, the monster medusas, that sort of thing. I use it for big dive and rises. I use it for big top waters. So those are just some of the applications that I use those rods for. And just as a quick aside, the reels that I have on most of my rods are all Shimano reels. The 400 and 500 tranks reels I think are just fantastic. I've got a 400 high gear on my surgical strike, a 500 high gear on the shock and awe. I really like the high gear. I'd rather slow down my retrieve than have to speed it up with the PG. Whatever is comfortable for you, go with that by all means. Uh, doesn't matter if you're loyal to Shimano, Abu Garcia, Daiwa, whatever you like to throw, toss it on the rod and as long as you've got confidence in it, that's half the game right there. Ladies and gents, I hope that made sense. I hope this wasn't just the ramblings of a madman musky fisherman. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions about this stuff, please, please, please let me know in the comments. And with that, I think that's going to be our video for the week. I so much appreciate you guys watching. It just uh, makes me very happy to see people out there watching this stuff. It's awesome. So thank you so much, everybody. And I will see you on the next video.